What is up guys and welcome back to yet again another Python tutorial and look at us we are becoming absolute legends of Python and we're ready to tackle our next project and today we're going to be tackling rock paper scissors. Everyone knows rock paper scissors you might win you might lose whatever but it has settled some of the greatest debates in history and we are ready to code it in Python today so let's just hop right into the video. Okay here we are in Replit and we're going to create a Python project. Obviously you can do this in Visual Studio too I just prefer Replit because it's really nice. I'm going to call this rock paper scissors and we're going to create that all right here we are we have our project open and let's just hop right into the fun part we're going to start by importing random and this is going to be used to generate that random hand that the computer is going to be picking from let's just have a welcome statement to you know greet our awesome people that are playing this game welcome to rock paper scissors with a good old exclamation mark print another line right below that and we'll just have dash lines that way there's some nice spacing in between the welcome statement and then the actual game all right guys next we're going to set up a few variables so one we need well first we're going to say set up variables we need to you know tell ourselves later with a nice comment we're going to say cpu score is zero player score is also zero and then our tie score is also zero so this is obviously going to be used to keep track of our score as the player the computer score as the computer and if we end up tying we might as well keep track of that too the last variable that we have to set up is our possible combinations right so we're going to say possible hands and we're going to create a little list here we're going to say rock is one of the selections paper is another selection and scissors is the final one all right, next, let's lay out a simple baseline function that we can call on later to determine if who has won, right? We could just pass in, you know, our hand and the computer's hand and determine, you know, based off those combinations, who just won. So we're gonna define a function. We're gonna call it check for winner. We're gonna pass in our player hand as the first parameter and our computer hand as the second parameter. Now in this function, it's gonna be extremely simple. We're just gonna have a bunch of if else's based on the different combinations of the game. And yeah, let's just start getting into it. So we're gonna say if the player, which is us, if our, oops, our player hand, if that, if that is equal to rock and the computer hand is equal to paper, well, then we know that we have just lost because paper is going to be rock. So we're going to just print out a line here and be like, sorry, you lost with a sad face because we don't like losing. And then we're going to have an a if here or an else if, and we're going to just keep on going down the line. So the next combination would be player hand is rock once again. However, this time the computer hand happens to be scissors. So obviously if the computer has scissors and we have a rock, um, we've won. So we're going to say congrats, you have won. And let's do a smiley face. All right, now before we keep going, inside of each of these if statements, we need to return the winner of the game. That way we can you know, call on this function that determines whoever won, and then it passes back to us who won. So in our scenario that we lost, we should just return the string CPU. And then in the scenario that we have won, we should return player. All right, guys, um, let's just keep going down the line here. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, and then I'll explain what I did at the end. All right, guys, here we are. We have the rest of our function here, and you'll notice that I kept going down. So we had scissors here, scissors, and paper, and paper. And obviously for each one, you know, there can only be one combination. So I have paper, they have rock. I have paper, they have scissors, and so on. One important thing to note is the very last thing, um, you need an else at the very end. So if, in case, you know, it doesn't match any of the scenarios we've laid out, that would mean that it's a tie. And because it's a tie, we need to return the string called tie instead, and also, you know, let us know that it was a tie. So that's all it's going to be for that function. We have a super nice function laid out already before the game has even begun. And now we can start writing the logic to create our game. So we're going to have a loop and let's just say start game loop. We're going to have a while loop. And at like all rock, paper, scissors game that I played in my childhood, usually it's the best out of three. You know, it's it's too much luck to just play one game. If you win three games, you're probably an absolute legend, an absolute unit out on the battlefield of rock, paper, scissors. Um, we're going to do best out of three. This loop needs to operate on the premise that, hey, if the player score is not equal to three and the CPU score is also not equal to three, um, then we want to keep playing the game. And we're just not going to take into account the ties. We'll just, you know, let as many ties happen as they do. But, you know, eventually there has to be one winner. So we're just going to let that slide. So right off the bat here inside the swallow, we need to prompt the user, which is us, um, for, you know, rock, paper or scissors. And we also need to validate that. And if they don't give a valid answer, we need to keep looping until a valid thing is provided. And a lot of times this is called a validation loop. 
And to implement this, we're gonna say validate input. The first thing is while true, and this is just saying, hey, go ahead and run this loop and we'll decide to break later. In here, we're gonna say player hand is equal to input, which is a Python method used to grab input from the user. Pick a hand, rock, paper, or scissors with a colon and a space. And go ahead and add a break line there just to make sure it's on a new line. Okay, so let's say the user has just put in something. We don't know for sure if it's rock or maybe it's Thomas or a train or, you know, Thomas the train. <laughs> no, that's a st stupid example. But the point I'm trying to get at is maybe it is not rock, paper, scissors. We can't always assume that that's exactly what they did and it might mess up things later. So we need to validate this player hand input. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, hey, if the player hand is equal to the string rock or the player hand is equal to the string paper and you know what's next or the player hand is equal to the string scissors well then that's good we can go in this if statement and literally break just say break and that'll you know snap us out of this um, loop here but if they don't do that we want to keep looping a time and time again and we should just print out something simple here so we're gonna say print try again and also, you know, we might as well say invalid input, try again. Okay, so now that our loop or our validation loop is over, that will allow us to, you know, make sure that the user is entering legitimate stuff. The next thing we need to do now that we know we have a legitimate hand from the user is go outside of this validation loop because we have just broke out of it. And we need to say, um, we want to generate a computer pick. So we're going to say computer hand is equal to random and we're going to access this dot choice property. So basically we're saying, hey, we're going to use this random class, randomly choose an element out of this list here. So copy this, drop this into here. And with that said, we now have a randomly picked rock, paper or scissors hand in the computer hand. The next thing we should do is print the results to ourselves playing the game. That way we know what we chose and we know what the computer chose. So we're going to say print results. We're going to have a line here. We're going to say your hand, the colon and space and then comma and then player hand and then right below it we're going to have cpu hand or the colon and a space comma and then computer hand for that one now the next thing to do is we need to check who won the game so we're going to say results and remember we need to set a variable to this method up here because we are returning a string every time so we're going to say result is equal to check for winner and the two parameters for check for winner if you'll notice we the player hand is the first parameter we're just going to say player hand and the computer hand is the second parameter and we're going to say computer hand for that one. Now that we've done that, we could just have a few if else's to determine off this result string that was returned who actually, you know, won and what to do with the scores and everything like that. Let's pause for a second. You might ask yourself, well, why didn't we just, you know, pass in the scores to the check for winner method and, you know, increment them in there? And honestly, I thought about doing that, but, you know, for uh, simplicity's sake, let's just keep the parameters as low as we can. That's just how I prefer to do it. And maybe it's not the best way, but for this particular tutorial, Tutorial, we're just going to be doing like that. So they returned who won. And now right below it, we're going to say if the result is equal to player, if we won, we want to increment our player score by one. So we're going to say plus equals one. Obviously, next is we're going to say, hey, if the result is equal to CPU, we want to increment CPU score by one. And then finally, else that means it's a tie. So we can say tie score is plus equal to one. Finally, let's print out all the scores for everybody. And we're going to just add a line here, print your score and a space and a colon and a comma player score, uh, comma again, another couple of quotes. We're going to say CPU colon space comma CPU score comma space and then another double quote. And we're going to say ties colon space comma and then tie score. So this line down here will print out all three variables. Um, let us know in one simple line who has won the game, who has lost the game and who has tied the game. All right, guys, now that we have completed our um, game loop here, we'll just click enter a few times, click a backspace to make sure we are outside of our very first while loop up here. And then finally, we're going to say, hey, print game over. Thank you for playing with a smiley face. We have done everything we can here. Um, let's go ahead and run the game and see how it runs. OK, I clicked run. It's like, hello, welcome to, you know, rock, paper, scissors with a good old line and nice spacing. Pick a hand, rock, paper, scissors. So this is a good time to test our user validation loop to make sure that it works. So we're just gonna type in gibberish. Oh, hey, look, invalid input, try again. And now when we enter something valid, it should actually work. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose paper as my first turn. I choose paper and it turns out the CPU also chose paper. 
So it's a tie. You'll notice the tie score is incremented by one. That's awesome. And here we go again. We, it's time to restart the loop, play another round. Ties don't count. We're playing the three. Go ahead and type in, I don't know, scissors. Okay, so I had scissors. They had rock. Looks like I lost and the CPU is winning. This sucks. Now we got to come back and win. So we're going to do rock. Okay, it's a tie. Um, paper. It's a tie. Uh, I don't know. Rock again. I won. Awesome. Uh, now we're going to do scissors. I lost. Oh, crap. Um, this is this is not looking good for me. Uh, uh, um, paper. Okay, I lost. The CPU won all three times. I just got absolutely demolished. But the point is, it printed out, you know, game over. Thank you for playing. And we had a, a pretty fun time. Our program works. And we had hopefully a great time doing this. And we learned something. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you learned something or enjoyed doing this. Comment down below if you have any um, thoughts or questions or problems, and I'd be happy to help you out. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next one.